If mobile challenge data has been filed against your entity, you have the ability to provide response data for any hexagons that have been triggered as challenged during the FCC's mobile challenge process. A cognizable challenge requires a response within 60 days of notification. A workflow has been established where providers can view each hexagon that has been challenged and provide response data for any challenged hexagon as necessary. After logging into the BDC system at bdc.fcc.gov, select your entity to navigate to the submissions dashboard page. If mobile challenge data has been filed against your entity, a count of challenged hexagons will be displayed on the submissions dashboard within the biannual submissions table. Clicking on this mobile challenges link will navigate you to the mobile challenge response page. If no mobile challenge data has ever been filed against your entity, the mobile challenges link will not be displayed. You can also view a count of mobile challenge data against your entity on the submission overview page, which can be viewed after clicking on a biannual submission data as update. Clicking on this card in this top right corner here will also navigate you to the mobile challenge response page. The mobile challenge response overview page will present you with a count of challenged hexagons by challenge date at three different levels, hex eight, the smallest, hex seven, and hex six, the largest. You will also see a response status and resolution status, as well as a due date to respond to the challenged hexagons. Within the response data column is a details button that will allow you to view more information about challenges to your entity. Above the table on the page is a methodologies button. Clicking that button will allow you to create new methodologies for your mobile data or edit any existing methodologies you may have already created. You are not required to submit methodology data. If you used an FCC approved speed test app to collect any rebuttal speed test data, you can bypass the methodologies creation section. For this tutorial, we will walk through the methodology creation process. Entities submitting mobile speed test data into the BDC using their own software and hardware must provide information on their data collection methodology. This must be provided at the same time those entities are uploading their speed test data. These methodologies can be provided when uploading bulk mobile challenge data or when responding to mobile challenges. To begin the process of adding your data collection methodology, click the Create Methodology button. You will now see a three-step workflow that you must complete that includes add details, upload narrative document, and add servers. To begin the methodology process, click the blue Edit button on the Add Details page. Within the modal, enter your information in the Methodology, Technology and Environment, Antenna and Data Plan sections. Once you've completed entering your information, click the blue Save button. After saving your information, you will now see a green check mark in the Add Details card, and the Upload Narrative Document card will be unlocked. You will also see a summary of the methodology details you provided. If you need to modify your methodology, methodology details, click the blue Edit button here. Within the second step of the methodology workflow, you will need to upload a narrative document describing your methodology. Click the blue Upload button, then select a file from your local machine. As your file is uploading, please note your file must be a Word document, text file, PDF, or ODT file type. After your file has finished processing, you will see a status of valid data, and the Upload Narrative Document card will update with a green check mark. For the third step of the methodology workflow, you will need to add servers used for your methodology. From the Add Servers card, click the blue Add Server button and enter information for server name and type as well as server client. Quick note that when adding a server, if you select geographically distributed nationwide test servers with common configuration for your server type, you will only be able to add one server for your methodology. 
If you select non-distributed region-specific test servers for your server type, you can add multiple servers for your technology, but each must also include a server location state and county. If you wish to add multiple servers, the server type for each of those must be non-distributed region-specific test servers as the server type. Once you complete the server client section, you can click the blue save button to close the modal. You will now see a green check mark for the add servers card and your methodology is now complete and ready to use when responding to mobile challenge data. Clicking on this methodologies link here, will return you to a table that displays all methodologies you have created. If you would like to add another methodology, you can do so by repeating the same process here. To continue onward with your mobile challenge response, click the submissions dashboard link, return to the mobile challenge response section, and click on the details link within the response data column. The mobile challenge details page displays information on each challenge hexagon that has been triggered against your entity as part of the FCC's mobile challenge process. The challenge data section of the table displays the hex level, hex ID, technology, and environment, which will be stationary or in vehicle. There are three tabs on the page that allow you to view hexagons at the hexagon 8, hexagon 7, and hexagon 6 levels. The hexagon level 8 tab displays challenges of individual level 8 hexagons. The challenge hexagon ID, technology, and environment for each challenge will be listed. Within the type column, in cases where a stationary challenge automatically created an associated in-vehicle challenge, the tooltip will show environment challenged. Otherwise, the word challenged will be displayed. The hexagon level seven and hexagon level six tabs include challenges to parent hexagons. Hex six and hex seven challenges occur when four or more child hexagons are challenged. Child hexagons that were not directly challenged but were part of a parent hexagon that has been challenged will be highlighted with a yellow hazard symbol. Providers have two ways to respond to challenges, by submitting rebuttal speed tests or by providing infrastructure and invalidity data. Within the response data section of the table, you will see a count of speed tests and invalidated tests by hexagon. As you provide response data, these fields will be populated. The adjudication status column will eventually populate with any decisions that the FCC makes when reviewing rebuttal data. In the top right corner of the page are links for two data downloads, download challenge hexagon detail and download challenge speed test data. The download challenge hexagon detail link will download a CSV to your local machine containing all of the data depicted on the mobile challenge details page. The download challenge speed test data link will download a file to your local machine containing all speed tests submitted against your entity that have resulted in hexagons being challenged. Within the action column, you can click one of two options, concede or view map. If you elect to concede a challenge hexagon, you can do so by clicking the concede option within the action column. Doing so will open a modal containing information about the challenge hexagon, including hex level, hex ID, technology, and environment. Enter the certifying official contact information, then click the checkbox signifying that you are providing your electronic signature for the decision. Once you click the blue concede button at the bottom of the modal, that hexagon will appear with a conceded status in the action column. Within the action column, your options will now include revert, which retracts your decision, view map, and certification details. The certification details link allows you to view the information you provided when conceding the challenge. Once a hexagon is conceded, no further action is required of the provider for that hexagon. The review map page allows you to view additional information about the specific hexagon involved in the challenge. The map contains filters for technology, stationary and vehicle, while the bottom icon on the map menu allows you to toggle a display for hexagons at the hex 6, hex 7, and hex 8 levels. Hexagons displayed in blue are challenged hexagons, while challenges depicted in yellow are child hexagons that are slated to be removed as a potential loss because they are children of a parent challenge. As an example, 
there are seven hex eights that make up a hexagon at the hex seven level. Hex eights are children of hex sevens, the parent. If four of the hex eights have had a set of speed tests submitted to trigger those hexagons as challenged, the other three hex eights within the hex seven will be listed as potential loss as they are slated to be removed if the hex seven is removed from the provider's mobile coverage. At zoom level 13, this map will also display positive speed tests in green, negative speed tests in red, and any rebuttal speed tests your entity may have provided in yellow. Please note that the map defaults to display challenged hexagons at the hex six, seven, and eight levels. So you may need to uncheck or check one of these filters to see any underlying speed test data. As you hover your mouse over the map, you will see that each challenged hexagon has a tooltip with more information about that hexagon. There are also tooltips for each individual speed test. After clicking the Upload Response Data button here, you will see a four-step workflow, which begins with the speed test card. This step provides you an opportunity to upload valid speed test data showing that your entity provides mobile coverage to any challenged hexagons. If enough positive tests are uploaded within a challenged hexagon, the hexagon may no longer be subject to removal from your mobile coverage area. To initiate the process, click the blue Upload button, then select a methodology from the drop-down menu. This methodology can be an FCC-approved speed test app or a methodology that you created specifically for your entity, like the one we created earlier in this tutorial. Next, select the JSON file containing your speed test from your local machine, then click the Upload Data button. Speed test data is not required as part of your response data. If you do not wish to upload speed tests, you may click on the Infrastructure card. However, you must submit either speed test or infrastructure data in order to progress to certification. If your file fails any validations, they will be listed on the screen and you will need to delete that file before continuing. If your file uploads successfully, you will see a status of valid data and the speed test card at the top of the screen will display a green check mark. You may also upload multiple files as part of the speed test step. Once valid speed tests have been uploaded, you may continue to any of the other three response data steps, infrastructure, supporting docs, or certified data. Within the infrastructure step, you may upload several files pertaining to various aspects of infrastructure related to your entity. Again, infrastructure data is not required as part of your response data. However, you must submit either speed test or infrastructure data in order to progress to certification. Please note that infrastructure data on its own will generally not be sufficient to rebut a challenge, except when a provider identifies invalid or non-representative speed tests in the instances enumerated under section 1.7006 E4V of the Commission's rules. To begin the upload process, click the icon within the Manage column for the base station location and height file. The base station location and height file is a CSV containing records of each cell site used to offer mobile services. This file is required as part of the infrastructure step and must be uploaded prior to the base station carriers file. Please note that data specifications for each of these files can be found at the BDC Help Center website, which can always be accessed via the help link at the top of the application. Next, the base station carriers file is a CSV and contains records of each carrier, i.e. antenna, for each sector of the mobile provider's cell sites, identified in the corresponding mobile provider response base station location and height data file. This file is required as part of the infrastructure step and must be uploaded after the base station carrier's file. The base station loading file contains records of actual cell loading measurements for cell sites used to offer mobile services. 
this file is required as part of the infrastructure step and must be uploaded after the base station carrier's file. The test invalidity data file is an optional CSV file that contains records of challenger speed tests that the challenge mobile service provider asserts are invalid based upon infrastructure data. The test IDs within this file must correspond to the test IDs submitted against the provider, which can be found within the mobile challenge speed test file on the mobile challenge details page. For each test ID and test metric, upload, download, or both, at least one category code must be selected as the reasoning for invalidating the test from consideration in the challenge. For each category code, you must submit the relevant supporting file. The band-specific coverage mass file is a polygon file, which can be an Esri shapefile, Esri file geodatabase, GeoJSON, or GeoPackage. Providers can include separate maps for each spectrum band representing broadband availability for a particular technology that meets the same minimum speeds for the general mobile broadband availability coverage maps. This file is required if a test invalidity file data is uploaded that contains records with category two. The site-specific coverage maps file is also a polygon file. which can be an Esri shapefile, Esri file geodatabase, GeoJSON, or GeoPackage format. Providers can include separate maps for each base station and site experiencing an outage, representing broadband availability for a particular technology that meets the same minimum speeds for the general mobile broadband availability coverage maps. This file is required if a test invalidity data file is uploaded that contains records with category codes one. Once all required files have been uploaded, the supporting docs and certified data cards will be unlocked. Again, if you wish to bypass the infrastructure data step and you have already provided speed test data, you may proceed directly to supporting docs and or the certified data card. Users may upload optional supporting documentation to accompany their mobile provider response certification. If you do not wish to upload supporting documentation, you may bypass this step and proceed to the certified data step. There are two types of files you can upload as part of your supporting documentation. The transmitter data file is a CSV file that contains records of each mobile speed measurement recorded by the mobile service provider's transmitter monitoring software. You must provide a comment within the accompanying modal when uploading this file. You may upload one transmitter data file as part of your supporting documentation. The other data file allows entities to submit additional data that was not captured by the previous files and may include documentation, screenshots, or photos to accompany your submission. You must provide a comment within the accompanying modal when uploading this file as well. You may upload multiple other data files as part of your supporting documentation. If you need to edit the description you have provided for either of these files, or if you need to delete either of these files, you may do so within the Manage column here. When you have concluded uploading your supporting documents, you may proceed to the Certified Data step. Prior to certifying your response, you will be presented with a preview of your response data. This includes a count of speed test files, a count of speed tests within that file, and counts of infrastructure and supporting documents that have been submitted. After clicking the blue Certify button, you must fill out the contact information in the accompanying modal, then select the checkbox signifying your electronic signature. A quick note, if you do not provide any speed test data, you may still certify your response data by only providing a base station location and height file, a base station carriers file, and a base station loading file within the infrastructure data step. However, if you do not provide any corresponding invalidity data in this scenario, you will receive a warning noting that this minimal amount of response data is generally not sufficient to successfully respond to and rebut challenged areas on your mobile broadband coverage map. 
Once you have completed the necessary certification details, clicking the green Certify Data button here will close the modal and return you to the Mobile Challenge Details page. On this page, you will now see a green status badge of complete in the top right corner here. If you included speed tests as part of your response data, you would see a count of speed tests in the same rows as the challenge hexagon in which those speed tests were submitted. An example of this could be seen within the hexagon level six tab here. As the speed test file I uploaded contained 32 records with eight records apiece across these four hexagons at the hex six level. If you provided invalidity data for a specific hexagon, you will see a green check mark within the row for that hexagon, as demonstrated here. If you return to the Mobile Challenges and Verification Overview page, you will see that you now have a response status of completed for the challenge date that you have provided response data for. The resolution status, shown here, will display a yellow pending badge until the FCC provides its resolution to your mobile challenge response data. If you wish to decertify your response data for any reason, you can click this decertify button in the action column to undo your certification. Doing so will allow you to re-enter the mobile challenge details workflow and modify your data as necessary. Please note that you will only be allowed to decertify your response date if the current date is prior to the due date for the challenge date. If you decertify your data, you will need to recertify your data for that selected challenge date in order for the FCC to adjudicate your mobile challenge response. This concludes the video tutorial of the BDC mobile challenge response process. For additional information, including data specifications and video tutorials, please visit the BDC Help Center, which can, which can be accessed at any time by clicking the help link within the BDC system.